Hey guys, what is going on? In this video, we're talking about some of the biggest mistakes for new drone pilots. All right, so I'm putting this video together because I know there's gonna be a ton of new drone pilots this holiday season. There was a ton of Black Friday deals and I know just ramping up towards Christmas, there is gonna be a ton of new pilots. And I know a lot of you are gonna be getting the Spark or the DJI Mavic Pro because those two are great drones to start with. The issue is you see a lot of people who are getting these new drones and then doing something really dumb and then they post about it. So they put the video online and you're gonna see these videos popping up all through the new year of people crashing their Mavic Pro for the first time. Mavic Pro fail, Mavic Pro crashed into the TV. Like people doing really, really dumb stuff with their drones for the first time. So I'm hoping this video will help a lot of you new pilots because I've got a ton of questions, I've got a ton of comments. I've seen a lot of these videos where people are destroying their drones and it's easily avoidable if you know how to handle your drone properly. All right guys, so let me give you 20 of the most common mistakes so that you can avoid them when you're flying. All right, so number one is just not preparing your drone properly. So when you get your Mavic Pro, there is a gimbal clamp on the actual gimbal. There is a cover over the gimbal. I've seen so many people who are trying to fly and they just take the drone out of the box and start trying to fly it and then they'll take off. Well, there's clamps that hold things like the gimbal in place. So make sure you take all those off. Also with that is the different stickers that are all over. There's stickers over your sensors. There's stickers all over the drone. So make sure you remove everything so that your drone's clean. It's free of any stickers. It's free of any clamps. That way, when you start flying, you're not gonna have any issues. All right, number two, this is one that I tell people all the time, it's update your firmware. Even though you're getting a brand new drone, make sure you set it all up and update to the newest firmware. There's a reason they keep updating the firmware is because there's bugs. So if you don't update your firmware, then you might have an issue with the drone that could cause it to drift off, fly away, crash, I don't know, do something. All right, when you're first getting your drone, you're gonna have to calibrate your IMU and you're gonna have to calibrate your gyro. So if you don't know how to do that, go through the manual. If you have the DJI Spark, I have a beginner's guide on my channel. I'll put a link in the description. But then also a tip for those guys that are traveling, I reset my IMU and gyro every time I get off a plane or I'm doing a long trip or something like that because you don't know what has happened in the process of moving from one place to another. All right, so the next one is important because you don't want your drone to return home to the wrong spot. And that is make sure that your GPS set before you start flying. So when you flip on your drone and you're sitting there waiting for it to connect, don't take off and start flying. What you need to do is let it sit there because the GPS will take a minute to kick in and once it locks in on the map, then you can start flying. Otherwise, the GPS might say you're in Hong Kong and the drone will try to fly there when it goes return to home. All right, this one I see way too many videos on, and I don't know why you'd think this would be a good idea, but flying indoors the first time you get a drone. I know you're excited. You just got your drone from under the Christmas tree. You're sitting there with your family. You're gonna pull it out, and you're gonna wanna try to fly right there. And a lot of people are doing this. So they're gonna fly up, and they're not gonna know what's going on. Drone's gonna take off, crash into the TV, chop someone's arm off. You know, like there's a lot of things that could go wrong. You're gonna wanna fly in a big open space for your first time. So people often assume that, you know, drones are easy, that they're made just to pick up and fly. But in all honesty, it is a high tech piece of equipment. So make sure that you treat it like a high tech piece of equipment and don't just brush over the manual or brush over, you know, a guide. Because if you do that, that's when you're going to crash. You, you got to know your drone and you got to know how to fly it before you even turn it on and take it off. All right. And that goes into the next biggest mistake, and that is just not knowing your drone, not understanding your drone. You know, the worst thing that you can do is not understanding how this object works and how this object flies. So you need to know like what everything on the drone does, what everything does on the controller, everything in the app. So really take time and learn all those different pieces. The people that don't turn, take time and learn the pieces, they get up in the air, they start flying, and then something crazy happens and the drone will take off and you have no idea how to fix it when it could be a very easily correctable thing. You get flyaways all the time. It could have been a setting that someone just put in there wrong and it caused them to do a flyaway. All right, so the next biggest mistake is that people will fly without a spotter. So what a spotter is, is a person, another person, not you, that is maintaining a visual line of sight the entire time 
whereas you're focused on the controller and the actual screen. People don't have a spotter, the drone will like hit a tree or something. You just gotta understand your space and if you're a first time flyer, you're not gonna know by looking off the app. So you're gonna want someone to, to watch the drone as you're flying, especially for the first few times. Okay, so this is a big one for first time flyers. And because of this, there's been a lot of rules and regulations that have been changed. And that is flying in restricted areas. You see people go and fly in these places that they're not supposed to be just because they don't know the rules. And then because you posted that video on YouTube, you're now gonna get charged with a fine. You're gonna have some sort of regulation change because you flew where you didn't know. And being ignorant about the situation is not a good thing. Just because you haven't flown before doesn't mean you have the right to fly wherever you wanna fly. So like, there was a story about someone who flew in a national park that was before the national park rule and like caused some major issue. So make sure you understand the laws and regulations before you fly. All right, and this goes into the next one. Make sure you understand the FAA guidelines. These are the rules in the US. So if you don't know the FAA guidelines, which is not flying above 400 feet, which is not flying above crowds, like there is a bunch of rules that they set out to basically keep drones safe and to keep other objects that are in the air safe. And you'll see people fly like right next to planes and then that is clearly violating FAA guidelines. Okay, so this is another one where you see a ton of crash videos online, and that is not understanding your drone's sensors. Just because like the Mavic Pro and the Spark have sensors that basically stop you, tell you if there's an object near you, doesn't mean that they're perfect. So if you're flying into like telephone wires, there's a good chance that it's not gonna see those and your drone's gonna crash. So there's a lot of situations where, you know, something's thin, something's small, and your sensors are not gonna pick it up. You can't rely on your sensors. So you see a ton of crash videos of people, you know, flying into an object just because the drone sensor didn't see it. And then they have this cool crash video, but they also have no more drone. All right, so this is another one about your GPS. And this is especially for, and this is all about new flyers. And that is make sure your GPS is engaged the entire time. So when you start flying, some people want to turn off their GPS for some reason. I don't know, I never really fly without GPS. But if you want to fly in a different mode for the first time, understand your drone completely. Don't go and start flying without your GPS right away. Because the GPS is what keeps the drone in this spot. If there's no GPS, it's gonna drift, it's gonna do this. Like, it's, it's not gonna stay stable. All right, so this is one that's really important and people glaze over this all the time which causes crashes, and that is not understanding weather. There's so many people out there that do not understand weather, and they try to fly a drone. A drone is in the sky, the sky has weather. There's wind, there's rain, there's different types of weather patterns going on at different levels and different heights. And you see people like fly over a gorge, and then a gust will kick it, and the drone will take off or crash or do something. You know, you get over a building, there's gonna be a wind gust. Wind dynamics change with different objects in different types of places. So you gotta understand weather. All right, you see these kind of crash videos all the time and that is people flying into trees. Just don't fly into a tree. People wanna get those really cool shots where they're flying next to a tree, but they don't understand that, you know, what you see on the screen is not exactly what you see up in the sky. So they'll get close and they'll hit a tree and they'll fall. Just don't get near trees, especially as a beginner drone pilot. Just don't fly near objects. Just stay away, big open field, I mean, there's so many situations where someone's gonna fly into a tree, especially going backwards or sideways. That's why you have a spotter. And that's why I said you, have a, you need a spotter at the beginning because if you're flying towards a tree, someone's gonna say, hey, 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 you're flying towards a tree. And then you can take your fingers and hands off the controls and it'll stop. Okay, and with flying into trees, automation controls also cause a lot of people to fly into trees. So you have those cool automation tools on the Maverick, on DJI products that allow you to basically set it into something like an orbit or like, a spiral going up, you know, there's these cool things that DJI has included in their software. A lot of people, the first time they start flying a drone, will start using these right out of the gate. And a lot of them are set up for, for anyone to be able to fly a drone with a push of a button. The issue is there's limits to these. If there's an object, if there's a tree and you're doing an orbit, it's gonna hit that tree. All right, another thing that I see happen all the time is that when people start flying drones, they wanna test the range on it. So the first thing they do is fly as far away as they can, but there is an issue. You need to have battery to come back. If there's wind combating the drone as you're on the way back, it's gonna slow down the drone and it's gonna drop your battery. 
So a big mistake that I see happen all the time is people fly too far and they don't have enough juice to come back. All right, another mistake, which I don't understand why people do this. You know, I have three batteries for my drone so that I could swap them out so that I can keep my drone going. But a lot of people will drain their battery and, and a lot of people will fly till the battery is completely dead. I never let my battery drop below 30% just because if there's an emergency, I can get the drone back still. I mean, the worst thing you can do is run out of juice as you're flying. All right, I know I already covered this a little bit earlier, flying backwards. When you fly backwards, you're gonna hit an object. There's no sensors on the back of the drone. So one of the biggest mistakes is people will fly backwards and then crash the drone. If you don't have a spotter, if you're flying by yourself, make sure you keep your eyes on the drone and not just look at the screen and then fly backwards. Okay, another huge mistake of beginners is using your controller and just staring at the screen the first time you fly, first few times you fly, and not actually paying attention to the drone in the sky. As soon as you're just staring at that screen, you kind of lose the whole connection between that this is an actual object up in the sky instead of just a video game. You gotta learn the drone and then you can learn how to get cool cinematic shots. All right, and the last mistake that I see new pilots make all the time is putting it in sport mode and not understanding that sport mode changes the way that the drone flies. So sport mode makes it very fast, but it also changes the way in which the controls work. You'll think that you have control, but you'll try to pull back on a joystick and it will keep going and crash into something. So the biggest thing I want you to get out of all these mistakes that people make for the first time is that you need to understand your drone, you need to understand the software, you need to understand how it flies, and then once you've got all that down, you can start focusing on getting more cinematic shots, being able to fly in those smaller places. Because if you're trying to fly but you don't understand the object, but you don't understand your drone completely, that's when there's gonna be issues and that's when you're gonna crash. All right guys, I hope this was helpful. I hope this was eye-opening for a lot of things that could go wrong the first time as a flyer. Guys, if you want more tutorials on drones, cinematic drone techniques, all that good stuff, I've put links in the description below. Guys, I got a ton of cool drone content, stuff that's gonna help you fly, stuff to help you progress as you start learning your drone more. All right guys, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, follow us on Instagram at Wanderworks, and I will see you on the next one.